Hi everyone, the topic of this video is how to maximize your profits in a winning trade. Of course, we know that you want to avoid losses as a trader, but one of the things that plagues a lot of traders is that on their wins, they exit too early. They don't take enough profit. And what you always want to do is have big wins and small losses. So how do you get those big wins? We're going to jump right into that with a real live example from a trade that we took today. To start, my name is Peter Tarr. I'm a former options and derivatives specialist who was licensed as well as a licensed stock trader. On Twitter, my handle is Profits Taken. You can follow me there and also follow my YouTube channel here. So let's get right into it. First thing you're going to notice that I want to get out of the way is that I'm using interactive brokers. I talk about this all the time. I use interactive brokers. Why do I like interactive brokers? Well, some people prefer different things for charting, but interactive brokers is just faster and better in my experience for executions. What I mean by executions is when you actually click to get filled, you get filled better. You get in and out of trades and executions, everything. So some people like the aesthetic, some people don't like the aesthetic as much, but you know what? Executions are critical. And I like the aesthetic of my portfolio when I have good executions. And so this is what we were dealing with. May 13th expiries, 22, 17 puts. That's the trade we took today. And if you look on your screen, that is an image of the trade that I called out. And to all of those of you who are new, I always call everything out in advance. There's no hearsay of, oh, this was a winning trade idea that I had. If you don't call it out in advance, don't talk about it. That's the way that I approach things. So let's take a look. Let's blow this up and start talking about it. Now, first thing that's important when it comes to a winning trade and how to exit, there's no template, right? And this applies to everything in trading. There's no, well, what did you do? How do you do it every time? It depends on a variety of variables and that's everything in trading. That's why whenever I hear anything corny or silly, I know that someone is just a con artist when they say, oh, well, to set your entry point, multiply the average true range by 0.2. Right, because if that worked, this multi-trillion dollar industry wouldn't have figured that out, right? Everybody would be rich. It'd be the easiest, silliest thing. It's not that easy. There's no get rich quick scheme. But by learning strategy and principles, you can apply them and you can gauge and you can interpret information to have better results for yourself. So that's what we're gonna get into. Now, our entry point was here. You know, at 10.23, we were at 52 cents. And this is our entry point and this is what we're gonna be working off of. And I was asked, how do you exit this? How do you play this? Well, I'm gonna explain it in a way that makes sense for you. And I'm gonna explain why I might trade a little bit differently, why the person next to you might trade a little bit differently, and what the variables and factors are. Because who cares what somebody else is doing? What's important is what you're doing and what you could have done. So when I'm reviewing, I'm not thinking, oh, somebody exited at the absolute peak. I'm thinking, no, I don't care where somebody else exited. What would have worked for me? because I want to make money. I don't want to be sitting by as a fan club for somebody else and saying, oh, great, you made a lot of money. That's not something I would do, then it doesn't really impact me. I'll look at it and I'll consider, but I have to go based on what works for me. So as always, you're never expected to hit the peak. And this was the peak here, right? So we, we ran up to 113 and we went from 52 cents. Now, here are the factors. We enter at 52 and we actually get a good move up and we don't really pull back. We pull back to about 58 cents and then we keep going, 58 or 57. So from 52, we hit a high here. This is what's important. We hit a high of 62 cents and we pull back to maybe 58, right? So we're not even back down 10%, but we go from, from going 52 to 62. We're now up 20%. Now, it depends on a few factors and here's one of the factors that I'd like to bring up is are you scaling out size or do you want to use a different strategy, right? So at 20%, that's typically where I like to exit if I have a 10% risk, right? I'm looking for at least a two to one. You need a two to one risk to reward. Your risk and your reward has to have a relationship such that your reward is greater so that you can have bigger wins and smaller losses. Now, if you wanted to exit, you could start taking profits at 62, that's fine. But I don't see much of a pullback here. We see a consolidation. And one of the strategies that you can use if you don't feel comfortable yet with taking size off is you could set a trailing stop. What does that mean? So I say I'm at 20% and I'm willing to come down to, you know, 
it'll usually be 15 or 10%, right? 10% is a significant risk, but you're risking it for more upside. And so that means we'd have to have a five cent pullback and then you could start executing out. And then if not, you allow yourself to continue running and that's a trailing stop. Now with a trailing stop, you would have pulled out here, right? Because at this point we make a run up to 71 and we're ahead substantially, right? You had about just under 40%. And as you pull back, you know, with five point at 52, that means 5.2 cents represents 10%. So you get down to about 67, 66, maybe 65, and you get out with a good gain. You get out with just under 30%. Now that's if you have, let's say one contract, right? Now you could expand that as you go deeper into, into profit, right? You can, you can risk a little bit more than 10% because you're up significantly. You're up around 40%. You could risk a little bit more, but I don't like to risk too much. I like to use different strategies and I will detail that. So for me, what I do, it's a combination of trailing stops, right? Combined with sizing. So what I mean by sizing. So let's say that I take 20 contracts, right? Just over a thousand dollar purchase. And I want this to be realistic, something that everybody can apply. And if that's not realistic for you and you're listening, don't feel down or discouraged, all right? When I made my first trade, I kid you not, I was, I had just turned 18, I believe, and my commissions were higher than the actual stock cost, right? Uh, and it ended up tanking and going to absolute garbage. It was probably a good, good lesson for me to learn, um, but I treated it like a casino. Didn't know what I was doing. Everybody starts somewhere, right? So don't worry about it. Don't worry if you can't afford the greater size. It's good to understand the strategy because maybe you can afford two contracts or three. And if you can afford one, and if that's what you're trading with, that's fine. But remember, this is a 52 cent options contract. So maybe when you're dealing with a 26 cent, you could afford two. Because if you do one of these, you could do two at 26. So something to consider. So let's say that you buy uh, 20 contracts, right? And so you start moving up and you get this pullback. And maybe what you decide is you take off five, right? So now you're holding 15. And you decide if they keep pulling back and I get down from 61 to 56, I'm going to exit the rest of my position and maybe leave five on or leave a different amount on just to be aggressive. You take a pullback, five come off and you tell yourself, okay, I know that I'm ahead at the very least now. And this is what I, I do recommend is that once you're up 20%, 15% really for me, I start moving my stops up. So my stops will come up to 52 cents. Or if you want to be safe and cover your commissions, you can go 53 cents. So now you're covered and it's what I call a free trade. You know, we're not considering commissions here. But what it means is that I'm ahead, I got up really high. The worst I can do with even a small position size is to get down to 52, but I like to take some profits. So, okay, so you take some profits as you pull back and let's say you take profits at 60 cents, but not with your full position, right? Okay, so you leave the rest and you have an expanded stop loss, trailing stop. So you move up here. I think that you would, you would take some good size off here. So if you have 20 contracts that you started with, I think you're at least down to 15 or maybe 12 here and you can get more advanced but in in the beginning let's assume that we're just working with simple blocks of five that way we have four stops along the road and you can you can adjust this customize it based on your comfort level but also your execution speed because remember if you're going to sell in smaller smaller numbers so let's say you're just selling three or two right so two would be 10 percent at a time you might have to be quick right because if we sell two at a time and we start making a sharp move down you're gonna have to quickly adjust so that you can get your entire position out you need to have a strategy but let's say we're doing blocks of five right and the way that would work is with 20 you know that's one fourth so if you had four contracts we're selling one at a time so maybe you sell five here right you take some size off we get a good run up you're happy that you stayed in and we hit here and sell another five off we turn around we get a good move we keep going there's no significant pullback. Like this isn't a big significant pullback, three, four cents. We move up, we're up to 82. Maybe you sell another five here. You decide I'm gonna be a little bit aggressive with the next five, with the last five, because you sold three. I think we're good here. Cause again, I'm looking at percentage moves down, right? Get up to 88. Maybe I'm considering moving this cause this is, you know, a good portion. But if you wanna leave those runners on, you can leave them on. I think where you probably start to scale out a little bit more aggressively right here now we've broken a, a dollar we're pretty aggressive on the day we're almost at hundred percent and you take the remaining of your position size off here so for most people let's say you're just doing it in fourths or just four contracts right because if it's multiple is a four you could hold in take a little bit off hold take a little bit off and of course it starts pulling back you, you close out your position right you do not let this green trade go red 
you take size off, you take size off. In order to get here, it's gonna be really tough in my opinion, right? You would have had to have a lot of size and leave a runner on because this is something that I would not suffer. This is, personally, I didn't suffer this. I'm not willing with a portion of my trade, particularly as we get later in the day, because now we're getting deeper into the day, I'm gonna go from 110 down to 93. That's substantial. I'm actually out before that, right? At 110 towards this later in the day, and like I said, there's a lot of things to consider. Later in the day, I'm out at a dollar. Right, I'm comfortable with that. I don't want to wait through the day. Oh, you can uh, scroll to make the bars thicker or thinner, just like this. I'm not willing to sustain that. Now, was there more upside? Yeah, sure. I could have gotten up to 113. That's pretty significant, but this is this is good enough, right? And we gap down here. That's also something where I'm thinking, okay, this is a bit of a concern because the stock is moving more aggressively on us. And you're also seeing, if you look down here, you're seeing volume start to slow down. Of course, it picks up to the end of the day, and I know that's going to happen, but I might not want that volatility towards the end of the day. And of course, if you somehow made it to 113, you are not trading properly if you're not sized out before you get anywhere near here, right? Like if you're down and we're making these fast moves and you're down to 98, 99, a dollar, 13 cents, in my opinion, it's still too much to suffer. Like I said, so you could see as we dip down, and why am I showing you Rivian's options chart as opposed to the stock chart? Well, we had a phenomenal trade, as you can see. This was our entry, literally. It was at 23.40, and you can go look at my Twitter page and see all the charts of when we entered, and we had no pullbacks. I mean, if you got in right when we broke our entry line, you had multiple opportunities to get in and maybe you got in at 52 maybe you got at 53 54 but this was the range we were sitting at for a while and we went one direction right so you're profitable but this is a great conversation to have because i don't like to look at something and just say oh yay we're profitable we don't have to talk about anything oh we're all green right who cares who cares no i analyze my winners and i scrutinize because that's my opportunity to generate profits you can't just look at something and say Phew, I made my 16% no, because in trading, you're gonna have more losses, most likely, than you will gains, but those losses are gonna be smaller, and you want the wins to be bigger. So you can't just turn away and say, ah, oh, whatever, it was positive. Yes, it's better positive than negative, better positive than breaking even, but if you exit at 9%, when you could have run for over 100%, there's something there to be learned. So don't worry about someone else's template. And if someone's just saying, I bought 10 contracts and I didn't sell any of them till we got to like 113, good for you. You hit the lottery. That's impossible to time to suffer this many drawbacks, like massive percentage. Remember, 5.2% constitutes 10%, sorry, 5.2 cents constitutes 10% of our trade here, right? With an entry of 52 cents. So when we're up here at $1.10 and you're going to suffer a loss of 17 cents, you're going to drop 30% just hanging around and then getting back up and then they magically time this? No, you're taking too many ups and downs without taking size off, right? The first place I would say where you, you need to take size off, and this was quick, so this flashed on you. So you may have not even exited here. First place where you're definitely taking size off is on this drawback, right? And if you take off all your size, you're a newer trader, you get a successful trade, right? Now, if you have position size, you're taking some off here and you're making a run, you might take a little bit more off here, here. And then you have a pretty steady run. I, maybe you take a little bit of size here. This is definitely an area where I start to see some size coming off. And unless you have a lot of size, you're probably not staying around until you get here. You know, but I talked about in 20 and going in blocks of five. So it's just to understand it. Scrutinize your winners. If you want to be successful, scrutinize it. Now, how do you get to the point of scaling out as opposed to just selling? Because I know a lot of people say, man, I buy 10 contracts. I just sell them all at once because I get nervous. I see it reversing and I get nervous. Well, there's a couple things to consider. If you're going to be making multiple transactions to optimize your ROI, just know you're going to be making multiple transactions. Be ready to make a move. If they're not even, right? So I said blocks of five, or you could do blocks of two, but if they're not in even portions, be prepared to move very quickly because you're going to have to make adjustments in, within your brokerage and change it from quantity size from two to three to four to five. That's a little bit tricky in my opinion. Also, in a fast moving play, be ready to make multiple transactions quickly. What if we got up here, right, to 71 and we just started tanking down? And you sold five, be ready to hit that button again. Five, five, be ready to clear out your position. 
But how do you get to this point? Because a lot of people just say, I just like to wipe it all out in one shot. Well, it's like anything, and this is in my psychology videos, which I invite you to view, exposure. You're not going to get comfortable with something without any exposure to it, right? And exposure doesn't mean you'd normally buy 20 contracts and you just try and hang on to all of them and break them up into, you know, segments of four and then you have five different transactions. No, maybe what you could do with 20 is get up here, you know, let's say you sustain that pullback and it's quick. As you start coming back here, you say, okay, I'm out. And you sell 15 and then you hang on, right? You sell 15, that's 75% of your position size. You hang on. You take another little run up, get up to 78. And now we're down to 74, you hang on up to 82. And this time around, you're newer and you say, you know what, I'm out. And you exit the trade. That's okay. You now have that experience and you can build that confidence. And maybe it doesn't go your way, but that's okay. But you're building confidence and you're building into that strategy. If it's something that you want to achieve, you need to understand that maybe it doesn't go such that it all just goes up and you're scaling out at higher prices. Maybe you look back and say, oh, I wish I would have sold it all there, right? But you'll never develop the ability to hang on and to scale out strategically if you don't start gaining exposure. And if you're really averse to it, maybe sell nine out of 10 here if you've got 10. You hang on and you just sell one, right? You get the idea. That's the way that exposure works. When you're trying to get better at something that you are concerned about, take small steps. If you can't take that step, make it smaller. Eventually you'll get to something that you can do. Just take a smaller step, smaller. You know, bring the target closer. If you're trying to hit a target that's far away and you're struggling, well, just bring it a little bit closer, make it a little bit easier on yourself. But again, very important to scrutinize. That's how I break it down here strategically. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. There's no template here. This is what you're looking at. I'm also monitoring price action to see what's going on as well. Of course, you know, we've talked about that in other videos. If I see the markets making a dramatic move, if I hear news, like as, as I showed you all, here we are, and I could see that there's data coming out. I could see data coming in on, on Rivian. If I see significant news and they say CEO of X company caught in scandal and the stock starts tanking, yeah, I'm getting out. I keep my eyes on that. And sometimes during the day, I will also keep my eyes on unusual whales. You all know unusual whales. Um, just quickly here, I'll post the basis of our trade. Part of it was unusual whales, but the majority of this trade actually came from my analysis of the company fundamentals, macroeconomics, and of course with anticipation of earnings. So that was critical to this trade idea. Uh, fundamentals do matter. I mean, that's why investors buy and sell, and I had a strong inclination. And then of course, I used unusual whales and options flow as an adjunct. Sometimes I place more weight on one data point, sometimes more weight on another, but the combination of all of them is very valuable. Everybody, if you're interested in using interactive brokers for your execution, please see below. I have a link, use that link. It's so easy to use. Your executions, in my experience, the executions are so much faster. I can't take using any of the other platforms that, that don't adhere to them. There are just a couple of platforms that are good on execution. And I'll remind everybody when I talk about interactive brokers, I'm talking about interactive brokers pro. So there's the pro and there's the light. So if you want to check it out, explore it, see if you're interested, just check the link below. And if you're interested in unusual whales, of course, you could visit my profile. You could see it. I have a discount code for signing up there. But again, I think interactive brokers is worth a look and you can test it with a small amount if you want to and just see if your executions are faster and I have a video on how to set up. I will link to that video as well. Um, guys, if you have any questions,